All right, welcome back everybody. So today we're going over another audio tutorial. Now I've been asked a few times already, what comes first, an EQ or a compressor? And today I'm gonna to show you what happens if we put each one of them first and why we might put one before the other. Without further ado, let's get right into the video. All right, so as you can see here, I've just got an audio clip from last week's tutorial within DaVinci Resolve already. And my vocals are actually really, really bad. I have an almost untreated room, except for some really thick blackout curtains that absorb quite a bit of the uh, resonance within the room, but it doesn't capture everything. So there's a lot of resonance in the low end. And what we can see here is I've got an EQ, a compressor and another EQ, just to simulate what would happen if we did one before the other. The two EQs have identical settings, as you can see. Those are the VEQ1P from Black Rooster Audio. And then my compressor here is the VLA3, also by uh, Black Rooster Audio. This is an LA3A style compressor, which I wouldn't usually use on vocals uh, for spoken word anyway, but it, it does the job for for this demonstration anyway. So why would you put one before the other? Well, if you know what a compressor does, it's basically going to lower the dynamic range. So in doing so, it's going to both sort of even out the dynamics, meaning that the lowest and the highest uh, frequencies in terms of volume are going to be much more similar. So if you put the compressor first and you have a lot of problems in your room, it's going to enhance those problems. Whereas on the other side, if you like the sound that you're getting out of your microphone and you like the sound of your room, then putting a compressor first will typically sweeten that a little bit. And then if you wanted to do some fine adjustment afterwards with an EQ, you should do that. But if you are like me and have some resonances in the room which are quite harsh sounding, or you have a lower end microphone that has a really crispy and harsh top end, then you might want to get rid of some of those harsh sounds before you compress. And what I'm going to do is just take these extreme settings that I have set up in my uh, EQ and compression right here, and I'm going to start with what happens if you put the EQ first and then compress, and then afterwards I'll switch it. And just so you know, uh, I have them set up in exactly the same chain as you see them. So this EQ comes on first here. You can tell it's on because that is orange up there and this is uh, highlighted red. Compressor is the same. And then this last copy of the EQ is third in the signal path. So if I just play this back after turning on the compressor and that first EQ, Let's hear what that sounds like. All right, so as you can see here, I have a clip within my timeline and it looks a little bit on the dreamy side already. Whereas now if I play it back with the compressor first and then the EQ. All right, so as you can see here, I have a clip within my timeline and it looks a little bit on the dreamy side already. What I'm noticing in this instance is actually a little bit more of that bottom end, a little bit more bass, and I'm noticing a tiny bit more in the upper mids as well. And that's because, again, it's going to be my badly treated room. Uh, I'm hearing a little bit more of the resonance come through, and I'm actually going to show you exactly what's going on by jumping into a uh, some audio software. I'm going to be opening up Reaper, which is a digital audio workstation. Just so you can see this a little bit differently and a little bit more clearly. So this is something that maybe I would do if I was to do it for my own vocal. So I have another type of EQ set up here. Just so you can see what I did. There was uh, a little bit of a boost in the low end just to fill it out a little bit. Uh, this band wasn't doing anything. I took a little bit of this room residence out, just 0.9 dB at 600 hertz. There was another one up here, which I took 3 dB out at about uh, 5,000 hertz, and nothing too much else is going on. And then I've got a pretty ridiculous compression setting of 12 to 1, 
and it's doing heavy, heavy compression. I would never do this on a spoken word. And then I've also got an instance of uh, Voxengo's span going here, so you can see exactly what's happening. And if I turn on my EQ here, and then just copy and paste an instance of it so we know that it's identical and place it after, let's do the same thing again here. So let's hear what it sounds like before. Or sorry, let's hear what it sounds like with the EQ before the compression. All right, so as you can see here, I have a clip within my timeline. And so you can see it on the low end, it never really got too much above that minus 42 range. Maybe it hit around minus 41. And then if we were to turn on the EQ after, because my room is very resonant, it's going to compress that. So we're going to basically start increasing that low end and then boosting it even more with the EQ, or at least that's what I'm suspecting is going to happen. All right, so as you can see here, I have a clip within my timeline, and it looks a little bit on the dream. And it's exactly what I thought. This time we hit around the minus 39 range in that same resonant frequency that I'm typically fighting within my room, right around 150 hertz or so. But if you still aren't quite convinced, I'll increase this even a little bit more. Let's go to 5.7 hertz. Uh, 5.7 dB, uh, copy that, paste that over here. So now if I play it with the EQ after. All right, so as you can see here, I have a clip within my timeline. We hit about minus 32 decibels, whereas if I place that same copy before. All right, so as you can see here, I have a clip within my timeline, and we barely broke above minus 39 decibels. So clearly, it has a difference. So the moral of the story here is then, if you like the sound that you're getting out of your microphone, you may want to compress first, so it enhances those good qualities that you like. Whereas if you're getting resonances, if you're getting harsh sounds, if you're getting anything that you don't like, then you may want to EQ that first to take that out before you do any compression. Otherwise, it's just going to enhance the problems and you're going to have a harder time getting rid of the issues later on. But again, for spoken word for you gamers out there, I would suggest that you probably don't do any compression at all. Try a little bit of limiting to tame the peaks. I know a lot of you are having issues with that. You're running your mics too hot and you're getting a lot of spikes and peaks and a lot of volume differences and that's what limiting is for. That's not what we use compression for. But anyway, I think that's going to be it for this video. If it was helpful at all, please let me know in the comment section below, as well as letting me know what you'd like to see in future episodes. I want to create content that you want to see, so let me know what it is that you want to see. And until next time, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Bye now.